Hello, all you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online, and you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads, welcome back to another episode. Here we go again. It is a terrific Tuesday here in the studio as I record. I hope you are all doing magical things, feeling magical wherever, whenever you are. I am going to address a question today from a listener. I am going to talk about some other things that I don't know yet that will probably come up that I haven't thought of. I'm going to read a quick review here on iTunes before I do any of that. And uh, you guys know I love my iTunes reviews. They help us to reach new people and also help to fuel my fire to continue this labor of love. And uh, this one came in by Jen Marie says, Jen says, life-changing podcast. Brandon, thank you so much for all you do. You are one of my favorite teachers. I have no words for the synchronicity you share with me and bring to light. Wholeness. And a heart on the end. Oh, thank you, Jen. Uh, It's a pleasure. It's an honor to teach with you, to learn with you, to grow with you. I always say we teach best what we most need to learn, and I'm doing this first and foremost for myself. It is a selfish, I'm a very selfish person. (laughs) It's a good kind of selfish because uh, what I teach or help uh, you know, in any way to with others is an extension of me, right? There's only one of us listening. There's only one of us tuning into this broadcast. We are soul fam all on the same branch of the same of this giant ginormous tree that is source. We happen to be on the same branch and resonate closely enough that you tune into this broadcast because we're family. We're, we're you know, we're doing this uh, thing together. We're journeying together and it's, it's a pleasure and an honor. And uh, all of you guys out there actually you're all healers and teachers and you know i've seen it said before what's going to happen with the planet when all the healers get healed right and that's the beautiful thing when you understand we we play all the roles right um and it's just a choice for you to make and to believe some of you you know maybe have self-confidence issues or you're just new to this material and you're very much in learning phase others of you have come through probably even taken this journey with me uh for some time you know been at this couple two and a half years now going on three years and some of you have changed dramatically in that time even some I know personally so you know you have the opportunity it is a part of your own growth to continue to to grow and evolve and teach and it's such a wonderful feeling to to give in any way and to get the feedback from you guys it's why I read these reviews because they set my my tone off on the right foot every time with uh, recording and what is this it's all about getting into uh, vibrational alignment, raising my vibration as much as possible so that the highest uh, good, the highest vibrations can flow through, right? We're all channels, we're all conduits, all music, I would say, all art is, you know, all the, all the most intelligent 
um, artists have all, all, almost all said to, in some way, shape, or form, hey, this isn't me. This is coming through me. And it, it allows you to take ego out of it. Uh, you know, EGO, everybody's greatest obstacle, or edging God out. Remove ego, allow this stuff to flow through you, allow source to flow through you. And be the conduit uh, that you were meant to become. And for some of you guys, you may teach one person in your entire life, but that one person could be more and have more of a ripple effect than um, 10 million, right? So you never know. So don't ever doubt yourself and, um, you know, don't ever limit thoughts about yourself that's the most important thing we're doing here is learning to love and appreciate our ourself and where we're at in the process whether we are feel like we really have this information down or whether we're learning it uh whether it's all new to us whether we're just exploring poking around it's all it's all good it's all perfect wherever you are all right well So let's see here. I'm going to take a question by Gregory. Gregory wrote in, Hello, Brandon. First, let me say that your podcast has been a godsend in my life. I'm not exactly sure how I stumbled upon your podcast, but for the last two months, I have listened to it daily, and it really has provided me a sense of comfort to know that there are people out there in this world who really want to create positive change and to expand others' consciousness into a very positive direction. I can't thank you enough for doing what you do. It's very inspiring and has really pushed me forward in the direction I feel I'm supposed to go. Ah, there you go. There's a great, real real quick um, little uh, exclamation point on what I was just talking about. Um, You know, everyone has this. I'm a reflection, right? So, uh, okay, continuing. Push me forward in the direction I feel I'm supposed to go, and I was quite hesitant to do so before encountering your podcast. Second, I wanted to ask for a little advice and see your take on a situation I have been dealing with for over two years now. Okay, let me stop again. So I didn't remember when I originally read this question that this, that whole part about, you know, hesitant to do so before encountering your podcast and, and it's a path that Gregory wants to take. I didn't remember that whatsoever before reading it right now when I originally read this question. Um, And so (laughs) it's really this next part that I wanted to address, but it's so funny because I essentially answered exactly. Exactly what Gregory is talking about here up front with that, you know, just kind of talking about the review and the whole idea that we're all reflections and teachers and all those things. So isn't it beautiful? I mean, how how the layers unfold and even the questions come before the answers in some way as we open ourselves up and we become more synchronistic. I think of my my friend Karis, who's been on the show a few times, who's very intuitive and multidimensional, magical fairy creature. Uh, wherever you are, Karis, sending you love. Um, and uh, <laughs> she, I remember we were going to One Love Festival together and she's like, oh, you know, I integrate before uh, I go to these events. So I actually feel what I'm going to go through ahead of time. So, you know, a lot of people have an integration period afterwards. Well, as you get more sensitive things, because there is no time, things can like come ahead of time. Right. And so that that's an interesting little thought pondering there. And even if you go back and listen to my re- recounting of One Love Festival, uh, what she had told me, she basically said, OK, Brandon, here's what's going to be experienced there because I, I integrate it beforehand and uh, there's going to be like shadow work and this stuff and that's exactly if you guys go back and listen to my stories of what happened there there were some shadowy things that happened and um so it was it's really cool but anyway i just wanted to point that out because it's magical and yeah all right so moving on second i wanted to ask for a little advice and see your take on a situation i've been dealing with for over two years now To begin the story, I worked very hard to get to where I'm at currently, and about six years ago, I got a job with a company I'd been wanting to work for for a very long time. It was a dream come true. My friends and family were stunned that I achieved this milestone. Two years into the job, I met a woman, and we literally fell in love instantly. She worked in my department in the company, and it truly was amazing for a while. Six months into our relationship, a member of our family had a terrible accident that completely transformed her life, her entire family's life, and mine as well. A few months after that event, the relationship took a negative turn and she became incredibly verbally abusive and very manipulative. She began drinking a lot and due to the constant eggshells I was walking on, I turned to alcohol for a moment there as well. I started having some very incredible dreams that were very powerful that made me wake up in waking life. I completely stopped all alcohol consumption and begged her to stop as well. I also seek therapy for the both of us, but she refused to partake. 
Soon after this, I started to get very suspicious feelings of what she was up to and started having even more dreams about the situation. To my surprise, my intuition and dreams all soon proved to be real. She was having an affair with my cube mate at work, and she was also having an affair with my supervisor at that time. I immediately broke off our relationship, and that is when the real games began. I couldn't go anywhere within our company campus without her somehow showing up and constantly antagonizing me. She was driving by my house, and packages were being stolen from my house as well. My cat, George, was mysteriously poisoned and had full kidney failure, but miraculously, he survived and is doing very well. After that incident, something awoke inside of me and real changes began to happen. Suddenly, people I've never been in communication with were all of a sudden reaching out a helping hand. She was transferred out of my department, and I discovered a lot about myself that I never knew existed within me. I also got promoted at my job and put into a new role that allows me to showcase my leadership skills, and I'm doing very well. At this moment, I'm thriving at work. I've been at a very high vibration for the last three months now, and things have been good. When I see her or the other two men, they still do their best to get under my skin. I've sent them light and love and many prayers for a while now, but when I see them, I feel anxiety and it brings my my vibration down to where I either feel sad, angry, or even a little depressed about myself. My question is, do you have any advice to help me deal with these types of people without me having these negative feelings or emotions that are associated with the past? Also, what do you think of the narcissistic and empath theories that are floating around nowadays? I've read a lot about those topics in the recent past, and I see a lot of similarities in my ex-girlfriend's behavior when it comes to narcissistic personality disorder. I am moving forward and attracting what I want in my life, but the sight of her or the other two men or any interaction with them seems to set me back a step or two within myself. Any advice would be helpful. Once again, thank you for all you do. I can't wait until the next podcast. All right, Gregory. Well, thank you for that question. I'm sure that's one that many people can relate to, having those characters in our lives that are um, toxic or trying, or in this case, I mean, if they're poisoning your cat, uh, (laughs) that's, wow, uh, that's pretty intense. So, um, yeah, where to begin with this? I mean, first off, you know, keep in mind any people that are coming into your life that are ever challenging you, it's one of the times it's hardest probably to look at it and say, hmm, this is happening for me, not to me. But if you really take into account, and it's something I talk about a lot, I have, you know, one of my favorite, several favorite quotes that I repeat over and over and over again. I bet you some of you guys could guess at this point some of the quotes that instantly come to mind. You know, one, If you're irritated by every rub, how will your mirror be polished? So what are they doing? You know, they're they're polishing your mirror. They're working you out. They don't know that they're working you out. They don't know that they're there so that you can have the experience and grow and get strong and overcome a reaction to these people. So right now you said they're causing your vibration to lower by their presence. So, um, you know, this is something that obviously... Uh, they, they really can't cause you to feel any way you cause you to feel any way because you are, um, you know, uh, choosing certain thoughts and, uh, based off of seeing them and being around them. What if you really understood that they're happening for you, not to you, and they're there so that you can have the experience of non-reactivity and just sort of floating above it, like not really, you know, minding. It's one thing to send someone, you know, good thoughts and love and light and all those things. Like you said, that's, that's great. But um, what about just completely um, sort of uh, removing yourself vibrationally from them, not thinking about them in either way, just letting them be, letting them be. It's like being mad at a you know dog for peeing on the carpet. You know, it's doing what it does. It's like it's it's they're playing the roles that they're meant. It doesn't have anything ultimately to do with you um, unless you make it all about you. You know, and if you can think of them as as them uh, there as a tool to work you out, you know, you're you're having to bench press these assholes. <laughs> um, so, you know, what's the other quotes, right? Let's see. Um, the smooth seas never made for a skilled sailor. Same kind of thing. Uh, another one of my favorites. Krishnamurti said, "Here's my secret: 
I don't mind what happens. Now, that can be easier said than done, but getting there, how do you get there? Well, you're going to have to work out. You're going to have to be tested. You're going to have to be tried. Uh, I mean, perhaps there could be another way, but uh, that's certainly a path. There's many paths to all the goals that we seek. And, you know, bringing that perspective, your, your mirrors being polished, you're becoming a skilled sailor, you're learning how to not mind what happens. Um, you know, one now, a, a whole nother thing that you could try, this is a whole different once again, there's many paths. What if you tried talking to them? You know, I don't know if you've tried this, say, you know, reflecting, maybe writing an email um, on if that would be appropriate. I don't know if that would or wouldn't be appropriate with your work situation. But, uh, you know, if not, maybe sitting down with them individually and saying, hey, guys, here's here's the experience of what I went through. Uh, maybe starting with the guys. Here's the experience of what I went through with that relationship. Here's how it made me feel. Here's how I feel now, whether right or wrong. You know, I feel like there's I'm being antagonized or whatever. So uh, I would just like peace and I would like to just bring it to your attention because a lot of times I think people aren't aware of, you know, what the interactions, uh, the energy they're bringing to a situation, right? A lot of times if you just go right to someone, it's like, and just, you know, bring it and lay it all out on the table. How many times in life do we all dance around and skirt around topics? There's so much like, you know, beating around the bush that goes with uh, interactions with uh, our fellow uh, beings, right? We, we, we dance around, we skirt around, we, we drop hints, we do everything, but just come out and just blatantly say what's going on. And a lot of times if you can get people, you, you come at something from an open heart, uh, heart centered approach, not attacking them, not, but saying, Hey, this is, this is, was my experience. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm working on in myself. You know, that's in bringing love to it. You know, love is the answer. What was the question, right? Now, what was the question? Just bring love, bring love to it. Try that. And if that feels good, if that feels appropriate, otherwise, um, look at them for what they are. They're there to work you out. They're there to help you, uh, sharpen your ax at becoming the, um, the master that you ultimately are. We all are Buddhas in disguise, right? We're all uh, attaining to Christ consciousness. Well, you don't get there without some uh, some level of trial and tribulation. Well, guys, um, that is uh, the show for today. My short but sweet uh, episode uh, discussing this very pertinent topic that I know many, many, many of us can relate to. And I hope you all take something away from this as you go out and bump up against other people in your world, other reflections that are there to serve you, that are there to help you sharpen your ax, to make you a smooth sailor. And um, as we all uh, continue each day, I know every day I'm a little bit better at non-reactivity, non-reactivity, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And, I, and so, you know, and, and it is two steps forward, some one step back sometimes. And that's something, you know, don't beat yourself up. Uh, you know, as you said here, um, it's it's a it's a step back. That's kind of the path a lot of times of growth. You know, two step forward, one step back. Two step forward, one step back. And so, don't beat yourself up if you backslide. Yes, there is narcissistic people too. Lots of them. There's, um, you know, it's something that uh, that is a representation of where someone's at in their own journey. Has that's that's them. That's the character they're meant to be. Let them be it. Right. All right. Love you guys. I do have a wonderful track to leave you with. This is the Temple Step Project. This song is called Embrace the One. Hope you enjoy. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. We're standing at the threshold. 